almost not. He blew it. He had Jay Z. He had the most important artist of his so, generation. So, so what happened with that relationship? How did that relationship that was so good sour so fast? Dame's antics were just, it became, like people also, over time, you mature. Right. It's like, you, you didn't have friends at 16, but by the time you turned 19, they were still doing the same shit right. that you were 16, right. and right. you're like, right. I can't. Like, yeah, we gotta, I, I gotta I, yeah, we gotta, you know, I, you start spending less and less time with them because right. of it. It's like. Marco says, Steve, backdoor, Dame, pause with Dame's own artists. Facts, Marcos. Somebody did their research. So again, we're not saying that, we're not caping for Dame. We just saying, man, you know, Dame's not just the the enemy in this story. What do you guys think though in the chat about this? Is it was it, you know, as far as because we again we love Rockefeller, so when it broke up, it hurt us, man. So do you think it was all Dame one hundred percent, Jay one hundred percent, or were there a lot of players involved, uh, Lee or Cohen? Man, come over here, man. I, I got a situation, man. They ain't messing up everything. I can hook you up with my people over here. Just bunny hop. Uh, was it also Steve Stout? You know, that was like, hey, man, Jay Z's the hottest dude in the game. Uh, Dame's Dame's trying to get all y'all on pro kids and ownership. Nah, nigga. Hey, man, I got a check over here for Reebok for you, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's go ahead and kill all that pro kids. Cause again, some of the deals that Dame was doing was based off of Jay-Z being involved. But then, and again, we're not saying Steve South's a villain, but what he would do is say, okay, well, Dame's trying to do the pro kids for the whole state property and all that? Nah, nah, you bigger than them, man. Let's get you on Reebok. All right, but, well, first let's talk to Nike first and then use them to get Reebok to throw you a crazy check with you and 50. And again, 50 Cent did it the right way. He basically said, hey, Steve, thank you for the Reebok deal, but I'm good. What's your thoughts on Steve Stout and his conversation with our Uncle Shay? And do you think he went overboard a little bit? Or do you think he's right about Dame? Bebo P and the chat. Dame Dash's alleged, what? mistreatment of people uh, allegedly at that time and attitude allegedly was not the primary reason as to why he and Jay-Z as well as Rockefeller fell by the wayside it's just not and that's just kind of the energy of how this part of the interview sounded or at least came off to me um, was because it was um, Dame just kind of being you know Dame is what I got from Steven I think there were just many variables as to why um, Rockefeller just kind of, you know, just fell, so to speak, uh, it split, whatever you want to call it. In fact, I think you hit all the highlights that I was thinking about Iceberg. Dame Dash, he was running Rockefeller Records and focused in growing that company and its artist, whereas Steve Stout, he was interested in snatching artists like a Jay-Z right from under Dame's arms, pause, um, while solely helping and partnering with Jay-Z during that like 1999-2000 era. And like you also mentioned too, Iceberg, I remember when Steve put Jay in that Heineken commercial uh, what, a couple decades or so ago, while right. Dame was promoting Armadale, which was yeah. that, you know, which was the Rockefeller brand essentially of liquor. Um, Ju you know, on some entrepreneur stuff as some, you know, black empowerment type stuff, if you will. Um, Dame was looking out for the collective as a whole when it was all said and done from a found when it was all said and done from a foundational level. And, you know, it's actually dope because I think Armadale was the first. Uh, I think that was the first situation liquor wise uh, to be owned and or promoted by a black company. So that's Man, a good look. A salute. On. You know what I'm saying? Salute to uh, Rockefeller, all parties in Rockefeller for that situation. And um, 
Uh, now, is there some things that Dame could have done better for Rockefeller at the time? That applies to every business owner, executive, power player, what have you in the world of capitalism. It's not just restricted to Dame Dash, um, but it just seemed as if Steve threw Dame Dash under the bus on his interview with Shannon Sharp. And I think you you, you mentioned 50 Cent. Um, I think 50 Cent just kind of recognized the writing on the wall, if you will, during his rise to stardom. He saw how Nas was, you know, being – uh, how how Steve how Steve Stout, Steve Stout and Nas was operating at the time, and I think he peeped game on that as well as other variables um, during Fifty Cent's prime rise to fame as one of the most popular artists at the time and still to date, just as a whole. Um, with that uh, Reebok deal, with the um, with the partnership that uh, you know getting signed to, um, I think. But what was it? Um, aftermath and all that. Um, I, I, again, I think for 50 Cent to even recognize the writing on the wall after the Reebok deal and be like, OK, you know, I, I kind of see how this might be going or how this is going to go for me or and what they might pull, try to pull. No, nah, I'm good on the Interscope. No, nah, I'm good on Steve Stout. I kind of recognize he's kind of shysty. So, you know, it, you know, it's it, it, if we're going to tell the story, let's tell the whole story. Not just one side of it. So it, I don't. In essence, it's not fair to throw Dame under the bus when it's all said and done regarding um, the history of Rockefeller and Jay Z. 